evening. It's time for the visit again. Early in the season, we had taken you on a really quick trip to Colorado with my guest, uh, Tammy Bauer. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Lillian. I'm really glad that you came back um, to do the show with us because uh, that is a ghost hunting or an etheric uh, an investigation is a more professional word that you and I did. Yes. Um, what I wanted to point out to the friends here is that um, we're going to share this from beginning to end without interruptions. Okay. And if you notice, we had, there was no fear involved. No, there wasn't. That, that's really sort of important. The other thing is that when, in a previous show, I had shared a clock with the friends that the Navajo gave me. And they said they would tell me what this was all about when snow was on the ground. Mm -hmm. So would you like to refresh their memory, what happened with the snow? Well, um, it was 90 degrees outside and it was snowing in the mountains, yeah. not too far from where we were. So I believe that was for, for you. That was for me uh, because it was originally in, in Indian gathering places. Now, because we are going to share this with you from beginning to end without interruption, I, I'm going to uh, make you aware of some things. First of all, when you deal with, is, when you do something like that, and just keep in mind this was an abandoned building, it's been empty for years. Um, we didn't know if they gonna have spiders or snakes or, or anything, anything like that. Sometimes there is darkness because there is no light in the building. The other thing is we made reference to um, some vagrants. If you notice, when we first come in at the front desk, there is no sign of vagrants. The second thing was about the, um, the electrical headgear. Do you remember that? Yes. Um, when we went in there, down at the bottom of this one staircase, there was no, nothing there. Nothing there. And we were in one room and you heard a noise and later we went back that hallway at the bottom of the staircase. There was a helmet that was used to give people electrical shock. Mm -hmm. Ex exactly. And then later we will share with you what uh, some of the other things that we had found. And so, so we just going to invite you to come along and on our etheric hunt in um, at Hot Lake, Oregon. So if we can roll that clip, and um, he, and here we go. So it was really kind of neat. You mm -hmm. Know. Mm -hmm. Would you do it again? Oh yes, wonderful in a heartbeat. Experience. Yeah, just a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. Storms here we asked. I cannot determine until later. It's as close as I can bring the bundle again. This is right next to Catherine Creek. Hold. This, we were told, was an old mental hospital and a lot of things went on here. Now it's a little late in the evening. Maybe we can come back in the morning. However, as I turn my camera this way, the smoke you see here is a hot spring that is attached to, to this lake. I'm going to get out the car. It's the lake. It's called Hot Lake. next to it. This is the abandoned mental hospital. And then as we slowly turn it this way, it's part of a barn that's attached. Yeah, and the owners are not here in the evening. That's a story for next year. So leave this as a cliffhanger. This is the sign since 1864. It's cooking. Melina for you. There you 
go. Oh, no, we got it straight. And this is a train. The mental institution in its heyday, as the lady said. Union Museum, they got a picture of a doctor, he was the one that ran it for all these years. And, you know. Don't make me go upstairs. Are you guys just leaving? The building. From what we understand, they have claimed to treat people with arthritis and things. They were my first little disturbance. We're not even in yet. And then there's a pool here. And then, of course, the hot springs. Property is now abandoned. Ah, we can't go upstairs because of the damage. Tell me stated that the house in the back here was occupied by one of the doctors. This is what seems to be the front desk. First impressions? Oh. Oh. Very etheric, uh, very negative, but somewhat mixed. This, I believe, was a sitting area. one of the doctor's so-called torture chamber with the electricity, um, electrical shock treatment room for the mentally ill, so-called mentally ill. Yeah, this I perceive to be like either the kitchen or the laundry room. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, that's okay. The floor is very deep in spots, and yeah. there's a basement under there, so yeah. we have to be at each step feel, make sure it's kind of solid. It's an energy shift here, not too pleasant. <sighs> Same impression I had at the front hotel of <sighs> uh, possibly some younger women that were pregnant. Babies were taken before time. Lots of experiments here. Ex wow. Okay. There's some disturbance in the back here. Oh, same heaviness. That same heaviness. This is a scan of the walls. I got a name earlier. Woman either named Rosvita or Rosvita. Um, well, I'm now turning to the right and then of course is the portable party chair and a um, person could have taken a shower and that, that would explain the similarity to the Florence Hotel in my case. Same energy. In the walls of it, so there are similarities there too. This is perceived as a lecture hall or dining room.
I believe there were in excess of 300 people here at one time. Maybe not at the same time, but various times. This is the beauty shop in Uwe. Can you move? The, uh, the movement you see is tell me with the flashlight because it is dark, so. But it is. Some of the rooms where it started, tell me, reminded me to watch my steps. This goes towards the upstairs where we really think most of the misery happens. Oh. I believe there's a lot of off-planet activity here, too, uh, which, of course, would be logical. This, way, this room here is was like a, a oh, yeah. Oh, wow, there's something here. This was a language-type room. Of like a foyer sitting room. Yes. Excuse me, I'm walking for you. <clears throat> the movement comes from this window there. So I believe there were so we'll vacants in here at one time or another. Oh, pretty recently, actually. Vacants. There were vacants in here. Impressions I get from this room of a soft gentleman, a pianist maybe at one time. Oh boy, there was a little something. Uh, maybe played the piano at one time. Very gifted person that had help from higher planes, and that's what resulted him coming here. He also had. A quite, quite a bit of money that the family at that time. Where's the elevator? The elevator in this building. Come close. It's the door and the button. We have at this time, this is the elevator shaft. We have at this time requested that. Some of the etherics would come downstairs because we can't go upstairs. So we could maybe send them to light. Very little evidence of bathroom facilities, actually. So they must have shared several bathrooms. Uh, this is one of the few rooms that's in really fairly good shape, actually. In the bathroom, we assume that one of the nurses might have resided here. The room opposite also believed to belong to one of the nurses. Light fixtures are somewhat modern. So, so it got renovated several times. Verifies what we just found earlier. This appears to be a public bathroom. It has a bathtub, no? Yeah, it's very neat. Yeah. Looks like my kitchen floor. <laughs> and this was the toilet was at one time. So, they're pretty that's, that's probably the, uh, the way that they show the visitors, you know. Oh, yeah. Because you can really, the patient's facilities and what would have been open to the public. This appears to be a trapdoor to the to the basement. But the basement doesn't huh? start until about here. And in this room, it appears to have holes in, in the floors too. This appears to be the doctor's office. Now we found a big hole in the hallway there. Oh, it's so heavy in here. Oh, table. God, you know what this is, Luann? This is his electrical shock thing, machine. And here is his table. Oh my God. There's his table for the patients to lay on. And the straps are still here to tie them down. 
There's a strap. This looks like some kind of an incubator of some sort. Did you see this machine here? Incubator, that's, that's what I perceived on the other end of the building. Oh yeah, that's exactly what it is, it's an incubator. That verifies what I said earlier about yes. uh, babies. But you see, this is, is an old x-ray machine. Look at this here, this is his, uh, this is what he could, high frequency millimeter. This was his electrical thing, this and this combined. That proves our... Yeah, put the, put the... This, high, this put proves, the on this. this proves our, um... Electrical shock theory. Yes, exactly. I, I don't, this stuff is very valuable. I mean, it's very old. It's worth a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, especially this year. So we need to, um, you see, they're not, you know, I think that um, what's here, I think they probably haunt people when they come in. Yeah. And have we have, I haven't had any negative um, um It's real heavy in that room. Yeah. That's him. But I think that when people come in here, they've been haunted, so that's why they haven't been able to get any of this stuff out of here. Uh -huh. Otherwise, they would have taken it, but they know that we're here to help them. Yeah. They're letting, allowing us to come. Yeah. yeah. But the office was lots of receipts. that they on it? Oh, let me see. This is a JCPenney. Uh, this is for a cup cabinet, rocker, desk, chair. Uh, it's funny, there's no date on it. Well, let's try another one. Oh, this is a 73. 73, so it was in operation somewhat recently. That would explain for the, the light pictures. This is 1969, a check for Mary Clark for $85. Paul Lake Sanitarium, it says I have the check. Uh -huh. And Norman Hitch, Norman L. Hitch signed it. Well, let's... Uh because we have permission to come in. Let's pick up one or two of these and then ask the real estate person if we could keep them. This is from 71. Uh-huh. 69. Now, this was signed by Richard Roth to Lillian Huntley. Oh. Oh, 
Okay. I'm not done yet. I can't find it yet. What? I'm falling back again. I've been falling backwards ever since we got into Union. And so I can't That's be right. go back, go back, go We're back. Yeah, and it's done here. Mm -hmm. There's more that we need to find before we're going to go to the Okay, employers. Do you want to you wanna, you wanna film the documents or ask permission to take them with us? Um, either way. By your foot. This? No, go back. This wrong thing there. But from here it looks like a bomb. This? Yeah. It's a piece of styrofoam. Oh, okay, cool. That was the one of the first things I checked. Oh, uh, you checked it too? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. It's made out to Lillian Hunt, who's 100, she was the bookkeeper. $199, 1969. There's also a death. Okay, here's Carolyn. Carolyn Mack. She worked here. Okay. Yes, it, this is uh, always for Geraldine Margin of Union Organ. Vita Nave. 1957. Huh? Vita Nave is the one who worked here. I don't know what Harriet is. She, uh, I don't recall what, what I said the middle one's name is. We had one Harriet somewhere, but then she could have been there before. Carolyn, I found, and I was directed to Well this is this is a uh, a labor and industry claim here from nineteen seventy one. It's not legible what it says. I was directed to this one. It's just not legible. Oh, yes, no sense figures. What? That's why it was orange. I'm supposed to look at the orange piece of paper here. I'm gonna film this. I'll take a picture of this. I don't have a clue why. 1962. Okay, this is an invoice. This is an invoice from the State Public Welfare Commission in Salem, Oregon. Uh, it's all right. Mm -hmm. They were given a number. I'm just, okay. They were all given a case number. That's what they were, nothing but a number. Yeah. It's all right. Mm -hmm. They were given a number. I'm just, okay. I want to one. $169. Okay, I got it in pretty good. Okay, I'm going to turn it But you see, I know they just told me what I'm supposed to find. There's some medical records here that that they want us to find, okay? So we need to look for medical charts, okay? Okay. This, it doesn't have a date on it, but it does say patient number 977, his name is Mr. Stewart, MC Duff, and it's an order for a hairbrush, vitamins, cookies, socks, 
shorts and t-shirts, razor blades, donuts. Delight, that's Tammy. We're looking for something. X-ray. Yeah, I saw it. This is part of the queue. This is a bolt reader. Maybe it's your electrical case. Yeah, an incubator proves that what you were saying about him taking babies before their time, doing experiments with them. Yeah. I feel that. This is called the Castle. Castle? Highland Hospital Mall. From the Highland Hospital? It's a Highland Hospital model. This was made in the 50s style cycle. It's a human crib. Just a minute ago, this wasn't here. This is an electrical hammer. How much? A while ago, I thought I heard something. And this is now. Okay, this for a while. Um, that wasn't here when we came to it just a few minutes ago. Wow. Yeah, goodbye. I did not um, see this. Well, also on the other side of this. The comment I made about a vacuum, we now have found evidence of somebody having slept here. Yeah, this is not safe out there either. This is the wall. Um, so now. Pick in the room and show where somebody is. Yeah, here's an opening. People have taken things and. I'm going to bend down see if I find any records here. These documents are as basically as 1990. So the burglary we might have occurred in the 90s. Okay, here we found some more documents. Beatrice Foods, it's a food food thing. From 1953. Uh-huh. There's files back there, look. But make sure, make, be careful where you're stepping this. Four, four files. Oh. Do you see files on the floor? Uh-huh. Right there. Weekly work schedule. No. That's close enough. That could be considered medical stuff. It is. It's a, it's a medical... Uh, I'm going to take a picture of it. This is the nurse's notes. I'm nurse's notes. I see another one, so I want to read it. It's okay? Uh, let me go and read it. My, I have to apologize because my camcorder is broken. Nurse's notes, okay. You want to read it? Well, I'm trying to... Talking about... Um, yeah, like that he was taken into the Masonic order. It says just a note. This evening to let you know I'm glad you took the step into the Masonic order. However, I would need some coaching in org in org and work to help you. There is some differences in working in every state work and if I did not know the places and taught yeah, no, 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 I can read taught that. you wrong. I find it is much harder to get straightened out and on the right, right track. track. Frankie and I were married in August and have been having a vacation. We plan yeah, on driving, driving back, back to, to Toronto, Canada next, next month. month. Yeah, which shows that, um, which sort of backs up that people came from everywhere. Something honest and something profitable. How is something? Say hello and I send her both our regards. If we don't do not get back to Northern Idaho, we will stop in. And Highway see 30 would be best 
if it is not known in when we are ready to start east we will be here till middle of next week anyway and would like to hear from you your friend Ashley and Francis oh, the crop circle is right around that little bend here we can see that we filmed this last night the other way now this barn here is actually part of this estate uh, just like we thought last night so um, it's unsafe to go in there we have no permission to enter that there are houses uh, quarters we found evidence of nurses that eventually we turned there we found evidence of narcotic sheets um, this is a big rubble dirt from somewhere so it was way much more than a sanitarium and hopefully the souls have a little peace now there was a man with a club foot I believe his name to be Wilbert or Willard or something like that and um, today is August the 31st 1999 in Union, Oregon, at the sanitarium that we found was really a place of experience. Oh, yeah. And back here she found evidence of, uh, I guess this whole place was self-maintaining because there is milk stalls and everything. Yeah, I found a window here. Let me go bring that in. part of the car stall. Oh, Joe, the gentleman from Century 21, he was nice enough to give us permission to enter. Um, while I was getting the, the camera here, I smashed up the camera, it got broken a little bit while we were gone. You made reference to the piano player. Right. Uh-huh. That was just a story I've heard. Uh -huh. I have never... I located the piano player and it's real early on in the tape. Uh-huh. Yeah, and uh, I, what we found is that he was there and um, uh, you know, he was quite wealthy, and uh, of course the family used a lot of his money, mm -hmm. and I believe he was, uh, I don't remember, I think, and he was on the bottom floor, though. Okay. Uh -huh. That would yeah. sense. Yeah, uh -huh. Probably the most um, ideal location for a piano, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. But, but he was hospitalized there, you know. And then we, we knew that uh, when I walked in, there was evidence of a vacant, uh, and then eventually I found sleeping bags. I don't think that in right now people there are sleeping bags there. Yeah, but I, uh, those yeah. have only been there a few months and uh -huh, were yeah. arrested because a lot of college kids and high school kids yeah. go there, and that's that's what has caused all the vandalism. Vandalism. Most of that has been the last three uh -huh. years. Well, what happened with the sleeping bags? They went in there to party and they were going to sleep all night. We found bullets and things. They got haunted a little bit and they got scared. Got and left quick. left the well, bags. <laughs> I've wondered a lot about actually being haunted or if they're just the stories build up in their minds. No. Because no. I've been in there at night probably 30 times and well, I've never been haunted. That's well, because you're if not you are allowed to. Thing. See, you were allowed to. That's why you were the perfect caregeeper. Right. And we were allowed to go in there. That's right. why. Yeah, like I was saying, I, I feel loved in that place. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, because you're not hurting anything yeah. in there. The people that go in there and destroy things and hurt things, they're going right. to yeah. yeah. show that they're there, but they're not there no more. But well, maybe maybe something good will happen to it, and maybe it will be able to be sold and be Restored brought back. And, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that's my I would I would quit doing this if I could have a hand in that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I love that place. So, I, really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have a question. Um, how Is do you get in the basement? There's no basement. Are you sure? Everything I know is in the basement. I've never seen a stairway or I'd like or to differ opening. with you. Well, the groundwater is so high that... There is a secret room down underneath uh -huh. that we haven't found. How to get there. Yeah. When did that wall get vandalized? There was uh, before I had anything to do with it. Yeah, but I would think in the last five years. Probably so. Yeah. And they came in from the back side. Yeah, the but there is a basement. There is something. There is something. It's not a big room, but there is one down there, and I think yeah. it's... 
maybe you could find out. I want to go look around. Okay. And if you could find it, there's probably going to be some really cool, like a laboratory stuff going on. All right. Like that. Did, 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 exactly. Exactly. Now the other question yeah. we had in our mind: uh, some of the equipment in there. Uh, the, I don't know if you saw the equipment. We said, okay, mm -hmm. uh, how come so nobody has, has wanted to get it out? You know? Well, uh, there was more, a real extensive x-ray lab on the first floor, and the owner took that and stored it because actually, I guess the Smithsonian Institute it's very valuable. Had, had approached him. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, the thing you used for the shock treatment things mm -hmm. there, and you know, that's real valuable. Oh, yeah. And then the incubator there, that's where he took the babies early and put them in there and yeah. did testing and stuff. That, on that incubator is probably my favorite thing in the building. I always go to that incubator. And Do you? Yeah. And the elevator is pretty cool too. Yeah, that is too. Uh -huh. Actually, my father had his tonsils removed there. And I, I never been very close to my dad because he left when I was really young. But a while after I listened to that time, he told me that. So. Yeah, but it was classified as a sanitarium. You know? Sure. So well, I, I guess they did a lot of abortions there, too. Right? Yeah, that's the first thing yeah. I got to. Uh -huh. right. and, and some of the babies were taken rather late. And so, uh, well, you know, with incubators, so they were. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, the reason it was so familiar to me, I had been into that scenario once before. I see. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, I've wondered about having any past involved with, you know, involved with the from another life or another time because it just, I mean, it just has been. And now I'm like known as the expert on how anybody has any questions or somehow they find me, you know, even, even though it's no longer officially listed, even though the realtors, if they get people that ask questions, you know, the way it's just falling into place with my involvement with it, I never intend to live there. And, and up to the point in my life when I listed it, I, I had never even been in it or thought much about it. It was just always there, and you drive by it, and it there it was. And now, the, now, the other thing, I did smoke a cigarette in the front foyer, uh -huh. and her uh, her coffee cup was in the truck, and it's no longer there. If somebody wanted a cup of coffee, they took it. I smoke in there, too. So. Uh -huh, I, yeah, I think I like but that. But I've done, I mean, I, I, I've, had, I've helped in a lot people to come and do photo shoots there and, mm -hmm. and a movie with some scene from a movie was shot there and so without really having any funds or any ownership of it, I've done everything I can to make people aware of it and yeah. bring it back and have a good No, actually I thought I was a little spooked. And what I did is I, I took some sage and smudged it as I went through the building mm -hmm. and, and sort of sat outside and, you, know. you go back. Uh -huh. Um excuse me. The gate was, we, we it took two of us to open the gate. Yes, uh -huh, and then when, when I left, uh, it was a breeze. I would no effort at all. I closed the yeah. gate. Well, see, now I don't have any problem with the gate, and mm -hmm. I don't have any trouble. Like I said, you're gonna, sometimes that, actually, last summer, a lot of times this business can be real stressful. Mm -hmm. And there'd be times when I'd just take out for a half hour in the day or something, go out and just up on the third floor, there's a place that was the doctor's office. It's that big room with the, it has a, kind of a balcony off of it. And oh, that's that window I doubled back on. It, yeah. Uh, it, it caught my attention on the way out, and I said, I need to get the yeah. shot of this window. But I would go and sit in that place, mm -hmm. and the, just, just to calm down, and, you know, just mm -hmm. chill out a little bit. And so, so, like I said, I've never felt anything other than that very first time, just because it was new and foreign to me. But Is there any... Um, Operating rooms on the third there floor? Is, uh -huh, the, uh, the third floor, the corner would be like towards Union, uh -huh. that corner. Uh, uh, um, that's an operating room. Uh -huh. And what else kind of equipment is in there? Nothing much like Yeah, see, so we sensed that from the first floor because yeah. that's where we put put that. Uh, that's even what though, I said. Yeah, even though we was on the first floor, we went we went straight up uh, the way you lay out the rooms. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we were right you know, under it and went straight on it. Yeah, so I think we're pretty correct. Uh -huh. There's no, there's no, there was some sterilization equipment in a room off of that, but mm -hmm. there's not anymore. It had a gallery where people could watch. And, and so what he did when he took their babies early, he'd tell them that they had to come early, so then they would, and then he'd tell them they died. Uh -huh. And he kept them, and then he, you know, did a lot of experimental things with them. Yeah, I, I but at the same time, he was also colleagues with um, 
John Wesley Kellogg from Battle Creek, Michigan, who, who had, you know, that, they have a big science fan there. The Mayo Brothers, he was a colleague of the Mayo Brothers who started the Mayo Clinic, so he was, on the one side, he was really well known as a, as a kind of pioneer. What was his name? Uh, just A.J. Roth is what I know. Well, then there was a Dr. Fies, Fye, Dr. Fye, and that, all that Welcome. should be in there. Welcome to I thank you so much for allowing us to share that with the viewers. And um, so I'm going to turn this off now. Oh. It took place from the night before, uh, then the next morning, and um, we had no information when we entered the building. And then on the way out, he handed us a book with some historical facts. I'm going to read them really fast, right down the line. And I have copies of that leaflet. Uh, it actually was more than a book, uh, like a book. If anybody would like to see that, um, I will show it to you. And I'm going to give you the historical background on it, and then you can we talk more about you know what happened. Um, to get back to the Indian clock, it seemed that the property of Hot Lake belonged to all the Native Americans, all the tribes in that area, and it is at 208 degrees, between 208 and 210 degrees at all time, and all the tribes gathered there for praying and healing. There is no record of ever having a battle. And I have reason to believe that it, that is the third place that I ran into that belonged to Native Americans, where it was totally peaceful until um, the immigrants show up, uh, not the immigrants, you know, but the, um, the non-Natives showed up and then things changed. Now, according to what is in that book that the gentleman gave us, in 19, uh, I'm sorry, in 1812, the first wagon trains came. In 1850 to 60, the gold rush took place. The first hotel was built in 1864. 1884, the railroad came, and um, that's the railroad tracks are very close to that place there. In 1887, they piped the hot water to uh, Le Grand, which is about four or five miles up the highway there. And um, so, Le Grand, Oregon was about the first place that probably had running hot water for a long time. Mm -hmm. Then a resort was built in 1910. It became, it became the Mayo Clinic of the West. They made $178,000 in excess of, when the rooms were like $2.50 to $3.50 a week. In 1907 to 1930, it uh, was considered a town under one roof. In 1934, it burned. In 1942, Mr. Dr. Roth bought it. In 1974, it became a rest home. And in nine, then from 74 to 1977, it was also a restaurant. In 1986, it, it went into foreclosure. And that is what uh, the physical things that we know. Right. Mm -hmm. What I thought was interesting is um, at the show today now, when we prepared the inserts and we played them back, everything was perfect. And so just like some other ghost things I wanted to show, there are technical difficulties. And I'm beginning to think that's not a coincidence. And so um, I'm glad you be you bore with me. So now tell me. I wanted to talk to you about some other things we found. We found medical records that we didn't take. And they were actually medical records and pharmaceutical records. Right. From 1935. Right. And they were... A lot of the drugs were still being experimented at that time. Exactly. And um, this Dr. Roth was experimenting with these drugs with the people there. And I would like to add, at one time, when he had, after he had got the place, it was an arthritis clinic mm -hmm. because of the, the hot mineral water. And, um, and then, of course, the sanitarium. 
and he did a lot of experimental unnecessary surgeries to people, which he did take the babies. They would come in on the train there, mm -hmm. their babies. And, um, a lot of times he would take them early, tell the parents that the baby didn't live. He would take care of the services. He did have a small incinerator there after he was done with his experiments, and he would burn them in the incinerator. And um, the night before, well, after we had went there, um, they were all calling out, help me, help me. I could hear them, I could see them. Um, they, you kept falling backwards that evening, and that's because they wanted us to come back and help them. And Betsy said, told me she was getting out of there first. Mm -hmm. And it uh, turned out that we found, uh, it was hours or um, some kind of paperwork that she was the nurse that had worked there and he, he did experiments on her. She was 22 when she went to work there. And then he eventually killed her and she did go first. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to interrupt you for a minute here before we get too far away from this. Mm -hmm. uh, when, she, when Tammy made mention of um, us wanting to go back, what we did, we had said the night before, if you let us know something, we'll try to come and help you. And of course, um, nothing other than voices that we heard and the story that you just told, mm -hmm. that is totally etheric and what we know psychically. Uh, the only historical fact that we have is what I was telling you. Well, anyway, this picture here, when the still photos came in, you can see the building here, but there is a light on. Right. Yeah, so uh, let's see, it's, it's, it's right here. So there was some activity. Right, because there's no electricity hooked up in there, so they did come to the window. Yeah, and the reason I'm showing this to you now is because now that you've been inside with us, mm -hmm. you know there was no electricity there. Now, the gentleman did, however, say that they um, had a viewing room, you know, where you watch surgeries and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, um, oh, let's see, we did, we were talking about Betsy. Right. Well, Betsy was on the, the paper, and she did go mm -hmm. first to the light. They all went to the light, all but one, which was uh, the head nurse. And a lot of them didn't know they were dead. They thought exactly. they were supposed to stay there. And that's what she thought. Then she finally went last. Um, she finally went ahead and went out, and they were all at peace. And we did find Vida. We found Vida that mm -hmm. called you out the night before. Yeah. And uh, it was strange when we went into the outside of the barn. When we came back, my coffee cup was missing off the dash of the truck. Now, we had locked the truck. There was nobody there but us. And it was just totally gone. So I guess somebody needed a cup of coffee. So mm -hmm. Yeah, we never did wonderful. find it. Um, I no. have to need to go back. I do, too. I, uh, I feel that there's other areas not particularly at Hot Lakes, but there's mm -hmm. other areas in Union, Washington that I feel that um, I'm needed there, and I think you, you have the same feeling there. I still have a real connection with the place, and we did a show on Clustered Water, mm -hmm. uh, where we were talking about there is probably other places of heat that have water that is clustered some kind of way. Yes. And every time uh, the clustered just the word clustered water comes up. It takes me to that, to that hot spring there. Mm. Uh, Union is a nice little town, isn't it? It is. It's mm -hmm. a real old town, but it, it's got a lot of history. It uh, it is very yeah. much. Mm -hmm. I was um, impressed that the gentleman shared some of the things that he did. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. everything that when we went in each room, and we were talking about what this room was used for, and this room was so and so's quarters. He verified that with mm -hmm. the literature that he had given us on the history of the building. So um, that proves our... Yeah, and, and it, the literature actually um, was talking about certain rooms. Mm -hmm. And that kind of, uh, we don't have a blueprint, but right. but it did tell us all these rooms that, yeah. that we thought. And they also said that they were in excess of 300 people there at one time. Yes, that's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. And they said in the heyday they fed, uh, fixed up to 6,000 meals a day. Can you imagine that? 
that's quite a few. Mm -hmm. But then the one one section was the restaurant for a few years. Too. For a few years, yeah. That the restaurant was in the nine from 1974 to 77, and then in the vault that had got broken into recently. Yes, mm -hmm. three bricks. <laughs> that mm -hmm. was a pretty strong wall, which means the whole building is brick. Hopefully, somebody will get it someday and restore it because mm -hmm. it is. It could be a beautiful place if it was redone. The reason uh, some of the some of the tape was so so shady is because sometimes when you have etherics, you mm -hmm. know, um, the camera picks it up like that. Well, there was a one section that didn't show up when I was going through the papers and you were filming. Mm -hmm. um, there was a ghost ahead that appeared on my right side. It did, yeah. In our original footage, but mm -hmm. it, we didn't get that here. You I didn't guess. see it today. I didn't see it today. It's, it's not unusual for things just to turn around, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. But I thought that, I, I was very honored that we was asked to. Oh yes, mm -hmm. to do that. And um, the whole place just felt so much different after mm -hmm. we walked out. When we walked in, it was real heavy and darkness and you could just feel the, the sadness. That's what, yeah, that's what I felt too, mostly sadness. Mm -hmm. Now, I know the gentleman, he did say that he had given permission for movies to be filmed and everything. Yeah. Um, but I feel that the place is probably going to feel different now because it's almost like, like we did find the Vida person, you know, yes. and gave us mm -hmm. names and everything. Right. And, and so I think that maybe the energy has changed. Um, do you recall the picture that we seen of the three nurses that worked there? Uh, yeah, there was in the clip um, early on. The, the one on the right was Betsy, the one in the middle was Carol, and the one on the end was Harriet. We never mm -hmm. found anything about Harriet, but that was the names that came to me. And, um, and it was the interesting. Way, yeah, and the way we came about that picture, uh, when originally we wanted to stay at the Union Hotel, and that didn't work out. Yes. And then the hotel we stayed, at on our trip there, no vacants. I mean, no vacancies. They were full. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They were full, and the lady immediately showed us. Yeah, we were talking to her about mm -hmm. the union, and she had that picture. Mm -hmm. She had got from a gentleman that was close to a hundred years old that mm -hmm. had lived there all his life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then she referred us to another hotel we made friends at, mm -hmm. and then the Century Twenty One building was right next to it. So it was yes. pretty much, it was pretty much all in the same in the same vicinity. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. we we had to find out who had it so we could go in mm -hmm. there. Yeah. And we did. <laughs> we had no trouble getting uh, permission. No. Know. He was wonderful. He was more concerned about the floors. He was. Um, yeah. Because there were a lot of bad spots you could fall through easy. Well, yeah, if you stop and think about it, you know, nobody in their right mind really goes in there and does this because we didn't know what was in there. Right. Yeah, just... Um, I don't recall seeing any mice or rats or any nothing. spiders or there anything. Nothing. That's real unusual mm -hmm. for a building mm -hmm. been empty so many years not to have anything. And then at one time, you know, I, I believe that was on the clip too, when we thought, I, I thought I heard something. And because remember we said, can you come downstairs? And right. the next thing you know here, um, the extra piece of that machine mm -hmm. tumbled, you know. It was down there. Mm -hmm. And the barn was very, very dangerous. So if, yes. you, if you end up in La Grande, you know, we would encourage you to stop by there. Uh, Union is a wonderful little town. Oh, it is. The house that the the man that founded Union. Mm -hmm. That house he built is absolutely beautiful. It's something to see. Yeah, we showed you that on our Colorado trip. Um, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a park with a, just a little stream. You can sit and relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, well, that's sort of how we, how we do that when we are asked to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, we were going to go home in the morning. That's right but we had to stay to finish that. And then the two people that worked at the motel, they wanted yeah. readings and we ended up staying a little longer. And that's what we did. And just like time, when we're told to go, it's time to go. Time to and go. guess what, Tammy? What's You've that? You've been a wonderful guest. It's time to well, go. Well, thank you. Okay. And um, we'll come back with another story next week, I think. And, uh,
Maybe I enjoyed come join myself. Us again another time. Yes, I would. Thank you. Bye bye.